Trainers, managers, and teachers, are you looking for a way to add fun to your training while keeping 100% of the focus of your class? I can help you because I discovered a tool that is attention magic. I've been using this tool for over seven years, and it's always a hit. I'm talking about Game Show Presenter Gold Software. The amazing thing is that it makes it fun for people to pay attention, and people do pay attention to something that's challenging, competitive, and fun. Here's how it works. Game Show Presenter is a multimedia template. You just choose one of the built-in game show formats, then customize it with questions and answers about your topic, and your game is ready to play. The software handles the music, graphics, and scorekeeping. Game Show Presenter works with almost any audience, but for training salespeople, it's a blast because their competitive nature kicks in and they get a chance to show what they know and sometimes embarrass themselves a bit for what they don't know. Either way, the game makes for a memorable experience. I have a link to the Game Show Presenter software on my website, so come check it out. I've arranged for my listeners to get a 10% discount off the $99 one-time price. So be sure to use the buy link on my page, 10MinuteSalesTalk.com. Game Show Presenter Gold. It'll transform your next training session like magic. Welcome to the 10 Minute Car Sales Talk Podcast, where it's all about life in the car business. Telling you like it is, here's the man with the plan, Terry Cameron. Welcome back to another episode of the 10 Minute Car Sales Talk Podcast. I am Terry Cameron. Before we get started, again, I'd like to ask you guys to hop over to iTunes, write a review, give me a rating, uh, one star, four star, five star, who cares? Well, I have to tell everybody that this past week, I got fired. The week before that, I got fired also, and I'll probably get fired again next week. I wasn't really fired in the literal sense, at least not the way that you're thinking right now. I got fired by the customer that did not buy from us, that went and bought somewhere else. You have to understand that that's who your real boss is, is the customer. And if they choose to go somewhere else and purchase a car, well, they just fired you and hired that other dealer. Now, here's the bad thing. When they do fire you and they buy a car somewhere else, they fired your parts department, they fired your service department, your make ready department, your general manager, your general sales manager, all of the porters, and all of the office staff that you have. Now, they don't write the checks, but they put the money in the bank so your dealer can write the checks. So, how do we keep from getting fired? Well, it's almost impossible to guarantee that your customers are going to be loyal to you 100%. But there are some things that you can do to help that along the way. I witnessed a couple of times in the past few weeks where I had salespeople telling customers things that just weren't true. It's not that they were lying. They just were telling them what they thought the answer was. When you start getting a little fishy like that, well, your customers can sense it, especially if they know the answer. And who wants to do business with a dealer, salesperson, service department, or parts department that is just not telling them the truth? You can't be wishy-washy with today's customers. There's too much information on the Internet. You have to tell them the truth. And if you don't know, don't make it up. There's too many things that can go wrong with that. Remember, transparency and speed are what's important to customers right now. They want to know everything. They want you to be above the table on everything that you say and do, and they want to get out of there as quickly as possible with the car they came in to purchase. Now, going back to what I was saying about not being wishy-washy, whenever you start making things up, or even your tone and inflection sounds like you're making something up, you lose all the momentum. Customers stop believing in what you're saying, and trust is out the window. And we all know just how hard it is to get a customer to like and trust us. We should also know that when they do like and trust us, the majority of them buy from us time and time again. So we have to be straight up with them. Well, at the same time, your customers, when they start sounding wishy-washy, you have to wonder, did you say something or do something to get them to start squirreling a little bit? You know, when the customer says, well, we're just here for a little while because... uh, Uh, My daughter graduates 
next year, and we're looking at cars that she might be possibly interested in. Who in the hell goes out looking for a car that they may buy in a year? If it doesn't make sense, it, it just doesn't make sense. Something happened. We lost trust with that customer. We fell out of grace, and now they're coming up with reasons to leave. They're coming up with reasons to fire you, to fire me, and fire the rest of the dealership. And when that happens too much, well, <laughs> you're out of a job. You can only get fired so many times before it, it, it affects you and your dealer. So we have to remember exactly what our job is. Our job is not there to persuade a customer to buy a car, at least not any longer. I would guess, you know, a few, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, maybe you had, a, had to do a little persuading, but not, not anymore. Our customers have already made the decision to purchase. They came to our dealership because they saw the price online. They, they read all the reviews. They know what they want to buy. They're here. All we have to do is help them buy the car. We don't have to persuade anybody. But we do have to be professional. Again, we don't want to get fired. Let me give you another example. I just recently fired my pest control service. I just don't think they were very transparent with me. They were at my house for less than five minutes, and about a minute and a half of that was just shooting the shit with me. And I got my bill a little bit later, and it was $145. Now, what kind of pest control could they have done in that little bit of time? Not much. I asked them about it, and they said that they, well, they apologized. They'd, they'd, come, they'd come back out and do it all over again. I just wondered how many times that they came and visited when I wasn't there, and they didn't do anything. I just didn't trust them anymore. I fired them. I'm going to get another one, and I hope that I can trust them. We all know, again, it's really hard to earn the trust of a customer. Not just in the sales department, but the service uh, department also. Can you imagine coming to the service department and meeting a service advisor and they tell you that the service that you're asking about is, I don't know, let's say $150, and you tell them you'll think about it, and you come in a week later and they meet another service advisor and they tell them that's $125. Man, we can't afford to do things like that anymore. And if you're in a dealership the size of mine, you can't afford to miss a sale or a service. It adds up. And we can't afford to miss one or two here and there. We need every one that we can get. And chances are you probably do also. Now, again, that word transparency is coming to mind. And, and I kind of get tired of hearing about that because it's not something that we should have to go out of our way to do. It should be something that is happening all the time. Just normal. We've got to get our customers that show up and have them become customers for life. We can't afford to be fired. Somebody else is gaining that sale somewhere else, and we're losing it. And we probably are going to lose everything in the future. Imagine if you were the dealer, and you found out that you were being fired 10, 15 times a week, which I think is not an unrealistic number in an average size dealership. 10 or 15 times a week. You know, let's cut that in half. Let's say it's just 5 to 7 times a week. You know, you're being fired... 20, 30 times a month, eventually it's going to start hurting. Now, I know what you're thinking. We're also being hired a lot more also. We're getting the customers that, have been, that fired the other dealer. I'm just saying that life is so much easier in the car business when you're dealing with the loyal customer that comes back time and time again, buys a car from you because they trust you, service their, their car with you because they trust your service department. They finance with you because they trust your business managers. We got to have their best interest at heart. And we need to make money at the same time. I know that's a tough one, but that's what we have to be able to do. Don't be handed the pink slip by anybody else. And if you are, you got to work your tail off to get them back. Now, I know I kind of got off subject here a little bit, but this is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart is watching customers leave and and there's really nothing we can do about it. And if they leave because we weren't we weren't up front with them, where we tried to get a little bit jicky on the price compared to the internet price 
and we get fired, that's, man, that makes for a hard day. It's hard to get these customers, and when we do get them, we just can't afford for them to fire us. So put your best efforts forward. Be professional. That's all you have to do. Know how you would like to be treated, and then treat your customer the same way. And if you do everything that you can to make it right, and you still get fired, well, you know, it's going to happen. But it's not because you got a little jicky with the numbers. You gave them some information about a feature on the car that just wasn't true. Now, one last thing. When your customer fires you, they don't go tell other customers to not come out and see you. They tell everybody else not to visit your dealership. So if you get fired by one customer because you weren't straight up, well, the rest of your sales force got fired also from any future sales of their friends and family. Let's turn things around. Watch how much fun it's going to be. Okay, guys. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I believe it. The sky's the limit. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Please rate it on iTunes and visit the 10minutesalestalk.com website to send an email. We appreciate your valuable feedback. And don't forget to share the show with a friend.